What's up, guys? It's Brian from Hash for Hub. It's about 9.47 a.m. March 8th, 2018. That's 9.47 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, we got a Bitcoin trading video for you coming up here. But if you're new to us, hit that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell, especially if you guys are on DTube or Steam it. Uh, definitely subscribe there as well. An upvote and a re-steam would also be greatly, greatly appreciated. And, um, yeah, we've gained some traction on, on Steam it and DTube. I uh, would love to keep it up. So those who are subscribing to us there and upvoting and re-steaming, we are very, 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 very thankful for uh, for that. And you guys too at YouTube. I think there's a little bit of a disconnect of people who are saying that um, the giveaway that we have is only for Steam it. No, no, no. It's for it's actually for for YouTube. Um, I haven't found a good way of doing it on Steam it just yet, and we don't really have. Um, as many followers by any means on Steam it and DTube as we do on on YouTube, so the probabilities would just be way way too advantageous on Steam it uh, or DTube to do it there. So we're doing it on YouTube. Um, so I just want to clarify any 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 uh, uh, any confusion there. So um, let's get right into it. So you know, last night we were talking and I was mentioning that. This last five waves could probably be counted as a one, two, three, four, and a five. And I just want to say that there's one other alternate way of doing it. I, I did not mention it last night. And I have this in these, um, these uh, greenish, uh, um, greenish numbers right here, is that we would have a one, two, three, four, and a five. And yes, I know the wick down here came down below where this five came off over here but that possibly can happen right that, that can happen it's not a big such a big deal um, we can have truncated fifths we had a, it looks like we had a truncated fifth right up here um, although this could be counted a little bit differently but still I think it would look very odd right this would look very odd if this was you know the one two three and this is four coming down and then we're gonna have a fifth they would just look very, 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 very odd. It could happen, but it would look very odd. So my bets are that this is the this is the one, two, three, four, five right here. We had a truncated fifth, and then possibly we may be having a truncated fifth right here. So I'm going to leave this up because it is a possibility, and we just need to account for it, right? So what we're looking for right here is that um, you know this is a zigzag. You know, five waves down, three waves up, five waves down. And then um, what we'd like to see is that we're going to have five waves coming up. Okay? So um, either way, if this is the fifth wave right here coming down, then we're going to start counting one, two, three, you know, three, four, five, and up. Or if this is the fifth wave right here, then we would be counting one, two, um, hopefully we would have a three somewhere over here, a four, and a five. Right? So. Those are two two possible ways. Another thing I want to mention is that we have we have uh, some volume coming in here. This is a one hour chart, right? We do have some volume coming in here, and I'm hoping that uh, more and more buyers come into this market, um, that the buy volume starts exceeding the sell volume, and therefore then the price it starts to go up. However, one thing I do want to show here, okay, and um, there are several markets here, and this is unlike what happens in the traditional markets, right? Where uh, traditional markets, usually an issuance is usually traded predominantly on one exchange. Okay, predominantly on one exchange. But here in crypto, uh, we, we, we have uh, the opposite problem. The same crypto pair could be um, traded on many exchanges to, to great amounts of volume. And so here's a few that we normally take a look at, right? And I don't bring them up in the videos because of the fact that the videos would be even that much longer. But I do want to show you guys that uh, it is something we look at. So right now, almost always, we're making the video on Bitstamp, right? This is the Bits Bitstamp um, uh, exchange, right? But we look at others too. And you'll see that the market and Bitstamp came back down below this line, right? The top of this wedge. If we draw the top of the wedge identically to the tops of every wave in each one of these exchanges. So as far as Bitstamp, we came down and we're trying to get back above. On the next exchange here, Bitfinex, right? We came down below and we're coming above it, right? 
on uh, you know on Binance um, we touched it we tried to touch it a second time and now we're just hanging above it and on Coinbase similar in a similar fashion we touched it almost touched it again and now we're kind of hovering it above it so in some in some markets this line is being as being um, used as support and some as resistance However, overall, I do think it's still bearish, regardless of the exchange. All right. I still think it's a bearish formation, regardless of the exchange. So let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and update our our uh, hidden support levels. The four-hour zone, we're going to keep the same. The one-hour zones, one-hour zone, we're going to go ahead and we're going to bring it down to. 10,600 No, I'm sorry, 10,060 Helps to be able to type properly. Let's do this. 10,060. Come on. All right. So 10,060, 10,060, we can see, um, you know, it's the top of these wicks right here. So again, what this hidden, uh, and it's this one right here, it's the blue one. What this hidden resistance line can indicate to us is a change in trend. If the market gets above it substantially, well, then we know that it has taken out the one hour the one hour hidden support line and we're looking for it to continue to, to continue to move up another thing here I want to mention is not only a 10,060 right where obviously it's touched uh, here a few times is that the daily line again we drew I think four days ago right and I wanted to keep it up even though we breached it right because I had a feeling that the market would run back up to it again and try to touch it again and then try to come back down again and why did I think I was gonna do that well, because A, it does it quite a bit. Um, just when I trade these things for all these years, it, this is kind of just the way in which markets work. Second reason is because of everything I showed you here before, right? Is that I thought we would bounce off of this line here on the other exchanges and then try to come and then try to come back up from there, right? So <clears throat> again, the bounce from the other exchanges with the line would be down here and then we would bounce back up here, right? So this is another layer, another dimension that you guys have to think of, think of and I haven't really mentioned it at all um, in really any of my videos because I really don't want to complicate things even more. So again, what we're looking for here is we're looking, looking for, you know, an, uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five. But the more this starts to look like an ABC, the more I think we could have another one, two, three, four, five coming down where we would have a W, X, and a Y, right? Which basically would just be, you know, a double zigzag, okay? So the more, again, I'll repeat this again, the more this looks like a ABC, the more it looks like we're gonna have another five legs down. Another thing I wanna go ahead and bring up is this bottom right here, okay? This bottom right here, the low, is 9,260. We have to keep this in mind. Actually, I'll go ahead and just draw a line, a horizontal ray, right? I think it was 9,260. Because if we break below that, then I think we're gonna see much lower lows. So in other words, a tailing sign to this, this is a very a great way how Elliott wave theory is used to predict is that if this is three waves up here, man, it looks like there's going to be five waves down, right? That's what Elliott wave theory tells us. More times than not, that's exactly what happens. So if there's going to be another five waves down, there's really no real room to make five waves down without getting below this level right here, right? This 9,260. We get to we get below this 9,260, but then we have a complete and utter wave failure of this impulse wave up. Okay.
And we don't want that. We do not want that. All right? We'd be coming back down maybe to this this line that I had drawn long, long time ago. Come on. This line I drawn long, long time ago. Okay? So, um, let's think, look at things on a daily basis real quick since we are here. Yeah, more volume coming in. I mean, red volume. Look at all this red volume. Right? Bearish candle, bearish candle. So far, a bearish candle. We're well below the 55 EMA on a daily basis. The Laguerre RSI wants to go ahead and, and point down. Another thing I want to mention here is that we have some sort of channeling coming on coming up right and anything anytime something makes a you know get, makes one point two point and a three point you got to draw some sort of line right anytime you get like three points like that you got to draw some sort of top line and a bottom line some sort of channel and that's kind of what i do all over the place okay and the bottom obviously you take from this point right here you know which is parallel to what's going on up over here and you extend this across, you can see that there's a lot of validity to this line right here. This is on the R daily RSI of 45 spot 94. Right? We have the other one at 59 spot 72. And yes, it touches here, it touches here, it basically touches here, almost touches here. You know, rockets through right here, it touches through here. And here, we have dipped below it. Okay, we dipped below it. <coughs> Laguerre RSI is going down again. So... You know, it's not a one for one that obviously this is definitely going to go down, but it uh, clearly, you know, states that this is something that needs to be watched. Okay. Let's take a look at something on a six hour basis real quick. Okay. Um, on a six hour basis, this candle formation right here does not look good. It looks bearish to me. Okay, I'm just zooming out and just say, hey, let's see how things look on a candle basis. You know, we have large wicks up here. Right. We also do have large wicks down here. Right. But, you know, I don't know why this just looks bearish to me. You know, it's just, you know, there's, there's, you know, the large wicks up tell me, t tell me, you know, I have to verbalize these things a little bit more for you guys. Sorry. Um, the large wicks up tell me that it's completely rejecting any type of higher level. The, the bull, excuse me, the bears just go ahead and just drop it down. Right. At the same time, you could also make the argument that the that the um, the bu that the bulls continue to continue to push back up as the levels come down here, right? So you know it could be it could be um, somewhat mixed, but at the same time, I would lean to the bearish side. And yes, I know I normally lean to the bearish side, but I would I would lean to the bearish side. So that alert was actually for. Um, for a one hour basis. Was it a one hour basis? I thought it was a one hour basis. I think that alert completely was messed up. The alert was a false alert. Anyway, so, um, so, 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 yeah. Um, that's really about it for right now. Um, nothing too much to get o go over without really just getting into it. A ton, ton of other uh, work. We'll make a ton of another another analysis, which um, is really just you know, um, you know, fifty-fifty type probability type stuff. Oh, let's go ahead and take a look across this and move it across. Yeah, I mean we're sitting right on top of it on a one-hour basis. Now, pretty cool stuff. Laguerre RSI is going down. Um, the fifty-five EMA were well below it. The uh, um, what's it called? 200 moving average were well below it on a one hour basis, same thing. Three hour basis, same thing. Four hour basis, four hour basis, we're pretty much sitting right on top of the 200 moving average. We're sitting right on top of it. So maybe in a four hour basis, this is something to look for if we break below it. All right. So really what I'm going to be looking for, um, let's look at this on a one hour basis. I'm gonna be looking for to make sure that we don't break below this. If we start looking to make some lower lows, um, I'll be looking for us to be breaking below this 9,260. 
what I ideally would love to see in the interim t- for me to get more bullish is that we b- break above this 10,060 definitively, okay, with a higher high, which we trace back down. And then the next stop is going to be this daily 10,175. Um, you know, this may that may take a few days. I don't know. Um, we are getting a lot of volume coming in here that may speed up the speed up, um, you know, the, the, the time frame of that. But one thing I do want to mention is that we're in the be- first week of, of March, and I had mentioned a long time ago um, when people were talking about the beginning of April that we're going to be, you know, mooning. You know, we're going to be we're going to be well on our way back to, to 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 the highs. That doesn't happen. You know, we're beginning of March. I remember saying we were the first second week of March, and here we are, and we're still talking about all of this. All right, we're still talking about all of this. You know, I'm not trying to say I'm right and they're wrong, but. These things just take time. Really, that's really what it comes down to. So, um, yeah, let's uh, leave it there for right now. And uh, we'll hope you guys have a great day. Um, And happy trading. Speak to you soon.